Hello there and welcome to another eruption update from Iceland. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey. Today is Wednesday, June 12th and I'm on the east coast of the US on a vacation with my family but I thought I would take a moment this morning and before we get going for the day and give you a little update on the things that have been going on in Iceland. Uh, as you can see from the webcam the weather right there is pretty well socked in but if we if we go back to last night um, a little bit better view of the conditions there at the volcano with the primary spatter cone the one vent that's still erupting albeit much slower than what we've saw in the past this eruption of course began on May 29th and so you can see the spatter cone erupting intermittently there uh, a little bit of a stagnant lava pond to the south and then a little bit more lava flow around to the north. So for now the lava flows aren't really advancing much but over the past few weeks since my last update there have been some interesting developments so I thought we'd share those together and I hope you're well so let's get right to it. So if we look at the Met Office update we do have a new update um, that came out yesterday from the Met Office. Uh, one of the more notable things was that there was a considerable amount of uh, whoops, uh, volcanic gas that was going into the capital area. So we'll look at that here in a second. I have a couple photos to show you. So the eruption has been going on for a little less than two weeks. Uh, we have this one primary crater that's active. Um, gases from the volcano have been going into the capital area based on some of the winds over the past few days. Um, and the other significant develop, development we have that we pretty much knew was coming at some point anyway is that the uplift and inflation trend has begun again and so the land is starting to rise in response to the magma infilling and injecting into the subsurface. Um, so continuing on with the MET update here uh, one crater active, seismicity is very low. We'll look at that in a second. Not a lot of earthquakes happening right now as we would expect. Um, and the lava flow that was flowing around the hill just to the west of the volcanic vent, so between the volcano and the power plant and Blue Lagoon, that lava flow advanced over the past few days and did cover the main road, that north-south road Grindavik uh, that runs from Grindavik towards the airport and that's the third time since we've started all this mess last fall that that road's been covered um, and so that was one big development. The other interesting thing about that lava flow and we'll look at it here in a second is that it's it, uh, the type of flow that we had that occurred just recently it inflated a lot more so it's actually more of an ah ah flow and it was actually it's taller it's thicker than some of the flows we have seen in the past and so that will be a little bit more of a challenge as they try to just pave over that roadway so we'll have to see how that goes moving forward um, and then this is let's see we've got yeah uplift that's been going on since the uh, since this eruption began we've reversed that trend of initial deflation and have seen uplift uh, we'll get to the GPS data in a second but just kind of a quick preview this is the Theorpia, uh station and here's the whole trend over the past year so there's our December 18th eruption here's January 14th February 8th March 2nd was just an intrusion March 16th and then May 29th and you can see initially we had that that deflection that that downward trend in the GPS data but it started to cur tr turn around here so it's actually forming this little bit of a hook pattern here and so we have the uplift that's been going on since the uh, over the past couple of days um, then the other part here they talk about is just the uh, they had winds light winds out of the south at least this was as of yesterday June 11th and that carried a lot of that, a lot of that volcanic ash was into the capital area for a bit there was actually some over here as well uh, to the east of Grindavik on the south coast of the Reykjanes Peninsula so a little bit of um, issue with with the volcanic gases and let me actually just show you that uh, now and just skip ahead to that here's some photos that were posted on photos on pa Facebook 
uh, showing some of just the VOG, just this volcanic uh, haze around Reykjavik. There's a picture there, another one of some of the boats in the harbor. And you can see how kind of murky it is there. So a bit of a health hazard. You can have folks with um, respiratory issues that, that can be uh, a little bit at risk and uh, maybe people with asthma, that sort of thing. And so uh, it maybe is cleared out now since the weather's more socked in, but that was the issue at least yesterday. Uh, we have like a really nice uh, 360 photo here from Hordr Krislifsson that was also posted on the news channel. So here we are looking to the north. Let's turn it towards the eruption site first. So that's looking more or less east. Fagardalsfjell's there. Here's our main eruptive cone here. And then what they're showing in red is this lava flow that wraps around the north side of Selingrafelt. Um, now we're swinging around to the west or north and northwest a little bit. And then you can see where this lava flow covered that roadway again. So again, this is the the third time this road's been covered. If we go a little bit further, we should be able to see uh, the rest of the power plant. But you can see the leading edge of this thing at the time this was taken. And it, I think it's advanced a tiny bit more, but not much. Um, here's the defensive berm right here. So they've got the road sealed off. Uh, and then over here we have the pipeline. So here's the pipeline leading out to communities uh, on the peninsula. Whoops, sorry. This thing's a little touchy with the laptop. And then if we keep swinging around, we can see the rest of the defensive berm. And then now we're looking at the Blue Lagoon and the power plant. So let me just kind of finish the 360 here since we're already kind of swinging around this way. Uh, so there's the leading edge of the February 8th flow. And some of this might be the March flow as well. Uh, but I think it was the February one that actually reached the pipeline and severed it. You can see the rest of the defensive berm leading over to this hill here, Thorpeur. Uh, and then if we swing around this way, we can now see Grindavik, uh, other things on the peninsula, and then the rest of the flow fields here. So there's the rest of the flow. And then one more little pull here, and we should end up, yeah, back where we started, looking at the main crater field and then the defensive berms around uh, Grindavik. So nice view there of just kind of what's what the whole situation is and where things are at. Um, if we look at the earthquake data, oh, here's just another view of the whole thing, another uh, view of the roadway. Um, and this is interesting because they actually have, um, this is the road going into town from the along the west side and they've reestablished that roadway. So this is the brand new lava flow from this May 29th eruption, but they've reestablished, they've put the gravel down over the top of that flow field. It's cooled enough, it's hardened enough and reestablished that roadway that kind of comes in between the berms here and gets into town. So just continuing, here's the naval transmitter tower right here. There's the uh, spatter cone out there in the distance. So just maintaining as much um, infrastructure as they can to, uh, you know, in case there's uh, evacuations needed, they've got options. And then here is this new roadway uh, coming out here. This is the one that goes to the Blue Lagoon, kind of like the back road to the Blue Lagoon area to the north. So this comes out between these defensive berms and then they've reestablished this roadway as well uh, over the top of over the lava flow. So pretty impressive that they're able to reestablish those roadways so quickly. Um, earthquakes, not much happening as you might expect. Uh, there was a small uh, 2.3 quake near uh, Lake Klevravatn in the Krishivik system. But again, we've seen this sort of pattern before. Nothing to indicate it's magma, most likely uh, tectonic in origin. Um, and just a few tiny earthquakes associated with that one there. Uh, the real story, of course, is the GPS data. And so if we give that a quick little look here, and we go to, if we go to Svart Sangi Station, um, and I'll have to make my little 
box a little bit smaller so we can see this. It doesn't let me scroll it down any further. There we go. So here's the, the up-down data, the, the vertical component of motion. So here's the eruption on March uh, 16th and then all the uplift that ensued in the couple of months afterwards. And then here's our most recent eruption, March 29th. But instead of seeing immediate uplift like we did with the previous eruptions, we actually saw a little bit of a downturn. And the only thing, I haven't seen any better explanations other than the one that seems to be the most uh, obvious, and that is that the amount of magma coming up from uh, deep was not keeping pace with the eruption initially, or, or perhaps that you were emptying so much of the magma storage zone that um, maybe there was some partial collapse or, or response to emptying out such a large amount of that magma initially. Uh, and so nonetheless, we see that the, the data shows that there was deflation, the drop of the land surface, but that leveled out a few days ago. And now there's just a little bit of an indication here that this is, this is moving back up. And when you look at some of the other uh, stations, I think it's a little bit more uh, compelling and a little bit more obvious that, that uplift has resumed. Here's the, another station nearby, and you can see that that uplift trend right there. So, um, and then I thought this would be interesting as well, looking at the data for the whole year at Svartsengi. Uh, let me pull this back open a little bit here, just to make that a little bit easier. There we go. Um, so here is the up-down data for last summer, August, September, and then going into October late October the rise as magma was accumulating and moving upwards that culminated with the November 10th intrusion uplift resumed the December 18th eruption uh, January 14th didn't show much of a, a blip there it was a smaller eruption too the February 8th eruption March 16th uh, and then the most recent one here May 29th and then you can see that little bit of a hook there where it starts to move back up so this is nice because it shows you a little bit about where we've come in terms of total uh, upward movement since this whole since this whole episode began last fall. Uh, so there's our GPS data. Uh, a couple news stories that <clears throat> I, I was able to find and also was uh, sent from Amanda Joe. So she was very helpful in getting me information as always. So just the, some of the uh, gases, volcanic gases over the capital area. Um, you know, so they just talk a little bit about some of the hazards there, people with you know respiratory issues again, <clears throat> and other sorts of things should you know avoid being outside as much as possible. Um, but I think probably the way the weather in Iceland is so dynamic, <clears throat> I would guess a lot of that sort of been resolved uh, today with the change in the weather. So, um, and then I found this kind of interesting here. They've been doing, of course helicopter tours over the eruption site <clears throat> but this article talks a little bit about how you know in the past they would see you know a, a chunk of the the business would be Icelanders people actually native to the area and the country um, but now it's mostly it's mostly tourists that are booking those overflights of the volcano it's about 80 percent um, foreigners that are booking those trips to see the volcanoes and one of the operators here thinks that it's, you know, just Icelanders are a little tired of the eruptions. It was kind of fun and a novelty in 2021 to 23. Um, but now, you know, with the threats to infrastructure and that, it, it maybe isn't quite so much. So just kind of a fun little side note. I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, and they do about 10 to 20 trips per day out to see the volcano. So this would be, you know, if you're in Iceland now or soon, and you do want to see something, um, and you're obviously not going to be able to get close to the eruption site, uh, a, a helicopter flight might be your best option to check that out. So uh, just kind of a fun little story there. So moving forward, um, we'll see what happens. I think, I think the main trend and focus will be on the GPS data and seeing how that turns around. Um, what that actually looks like in the weeks to come. Um, make myself a little smaller there. So how this trend here um, recovers in terms of the continued uplift in inflation and, um, and what, what, 
happens of course at the the surface so how long will the spatter cone continue to erupt we know now from the last eruption that these might sustain themselves for quite some time weeks if not a few months um, and that's different than what we saw over the winter where we had very short-lived eruptions that fizzled out completely within a few days and so it'll be interesting to see if this eruption can continue to um, provide lava to the surface even though it's you know quite diminished in output and intensity or will this just fizzle out and then we start maybe seeing a bit a bit more of a steeper increase in inflation moving forward so um, but that's why it's fun that's why it's interesting to just monitor the situation uh, continue to be impressed with just uh, the resilience of the Icelandic people in terms of just you know getting the roads reestablished, dealing with things uh, as far as I know the Blue Lagoon is back open again um, and so you know this is just maybe the new you know the the this hazard that's in this community and area um, is just something that's just managed with some regularity moving forward and just becomes kind of a a way of life and a, a common um, I guess a nuisance <laughs> uh, that they that they just have to continue to deal with um, moving forward so we'll have to see how things go but uh, thanks for joining me for this brief little update just wanted to take a few minutes to uh, let you know what's going on in Iceland but also to update myself and look at the data spend some time looking at that um, in the midst of this family vacation on the east coast of the US and I'll be back in Idaho starting um, this weekend and so you'll see a little more regularity from there but there is one more video coming out uh, I think tomorrow or maybe Friday I think it's Friday uh, June 14th there'll be uh, a new video from from Iceland that I filmed on my last trip there so you can look forward to that uh, as always thanks for your time and your support it's much appreciated hope you're well and we will see you later take care